Peace and blessings, beautiful people. Thank you all for being with us today, um, for taking the time out to join us for what will be a very insightful uh, and eventful um, discussion, hopefully. Um, today's show, we have obviously our esteemed mama, um, Bayina, um, who's joining us to discuss her latest offering or publication to us in terms of keeping our record, our historical record alive. Um, and the book that we're going to be discussing today is Jean-Jacques Dessalines, 21 Facts About His Life. This is the latest from Mama Bayina. Mama Bayina, I greet you. I welcome you um, to this beautiful discussion. Thank you. Greetings to the, the entire planetary family. Greetings to all of us everywhere. Lone, assalamu alaikum. Everything, hotep, all the languages that we have created, I greet you in all of them. Those I know, those I do not know. Whatever your tongue is, I greet you. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Ogudipe, for inviting uh, me today and uh, inviting me with one ancestor that, uh, for whom I have a great deal of respect for the work. It's not admiration. It's not, you know, um, oh, he's a, no. As someone, the more I study this person, the more I learn that if I take each one thing I learn, if I can apply that one thing in my life today, this week, this month, I will make myself a better person. So that's the respect I have for him. And that's who is with us today, though you don't see him, but he is present. No, oh, beautiful, beautiful. That 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 is a very lovely introduction, Mama Bayina. Um, and in a sense, it ties into the very first question that I was about to ask, which is that what was the motivation, Mama Bayina, behind writing the book? Um, and also, if I'll just add, because in reading the book, you make the, the mention um, of the fact that it's part of a larger compendium of work, you know, um, and this is the offering for now in that sense. So if you can kindly, um, again, you know, if, if there's anything to add beyond that, which is the first is, what was your, your, your primary motivations for putting together this work? And also, B, if you'd like to speak a bit about the extended compendium of works we can um, expect? All right. Uh, I have to say that mm, probably this is a work 30 some odd years in the making. Mm -hmm. uh, about 20 years ago, 21 years ago, I wrote having observed that all the things I'm reading are not doing justice to what my, what IT's artistry is. So then I said, you need to shut up and start doing what you think is missing, putting, put it on paper. So, uh, so that's how I started. Eventually I wrote, oh, I must know more than that, 30 years ago, I started writing poems, but all my poetry was about artistry. Mm -hmm. And then about 20 years ago was an intensive period of writing. I wrote a one, about 1100 page book on IET's artistry. Mm -hmm. I've written a book on Dessaline, this book, which was about 200 and something pages. Right. Uh, I wrote about and I wrote about different subjects and everything is just, you write, you put it there, you write and you leave it there. Uh, sometimes I make an attempt to publish, but they ask so much money that it goes back to the draw. Mm -hmm. So 
I had, I had about a 10, 12 years of intensive production writing mm -hmm. of things that didn't go. Maybe two, two or three things got published in that period. I did a research on centenarians that mm -hmm. was published in Asian. Okay. Uh, I did, oh, I, yeah. In, in that period, maybe about four or five years ago, I published the same book in French. Mm -hmm. And now it's in English. Right. Uh, so it's a whole process of publication. Now, to go back to this particular book, mm. when I thought I was done, you know, I reread and reread and I was satisfied. Okay, I'm going to go and fight and try to get it published. Uh, Desaline came to me in a dream mm. and said, mm -mm, you can't put that out on me. Okay. I said, oh. I was so proud of my work, you know. <laughs> Says, well, you know, too many words, too many words. It's all that French that gets you confused. Too many mm -hmm. words. So he starts chapter after chapter. Remove this. Remove that. Remove this. Remove that. Uh, on the sentences, he would say things. I would have places. I say the magnificent Dessaline did blah blah. He says, yeah. you don't need magnificent. Things. I did it, and if it is magnificent. Everyone who knows that I did that will, will have an adjective for me. You don't of need to put it there. Course. You're writing history. Just give the facts. <laughs> yes, indeed. No great, no wonderful. No, no. Remove all this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's how this book came to be. And then um, now this year, last year, we made the translation in English. And that's what this is. And it went from 200 plus, let's say 220 pages, to a 48 pages in the first version that he corrected. Mm -hmm. And this is a, hmm, where are the pages? Well, the pages didn't come out. Okay, okay. yes. They're, they're, they're not listed. I, I, I say it's roughly about 80 to 100, Mama Bayina. It's about 80 to 100. Okay. Yep. Mm. All right. But there were numbers in there. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, it, okay. It, it, it could be the language versions because I have the English one. See? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, sir. So this is uh, what the, this is. And in order to write about Dessaline, I must say, I had to go, I felt that having all the material that is, it's not much, by the way. Mm -hmm. There isn't a whole lot about Dessaline. Most mm -hmm. people write about other people, Toussaint in particular. But Dessaline, like for example, I think it was, which library? I think it was a New York public library. When I went and uh, I asked for Dessaline, I had something like four titles. And mm -hmm. I when I asked for Toussaint, it was like 2,000 whatever number of titles. Yes. So huge difference. Mm -hmm. So then I said, OK, logically, the people who write are generally Catholic. Most Haitians were at the base Catholic, went to Catholic schools, mm -hmm. some kind of congressional school and produce what that system wanted or accepted or approved of. So then I knew I had to find some other sources. So then I took my little feet and walked up hills where I met many people who did not go to school. Mm -hmm. If they knew anything, they knew it from what their mama, their great mama, their great, great, great grandpa told them. And that's when I start hearing things I had never read about, okay. yes. about the life of Desiree. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I took something like, hmm, I would say three, three years going back and forth to the hills. And that's when I really met the uh, centenarians. I started meeting people, you know, I'm talking to this man, he looks fine, he walks, he talks, he does everything. And I said, you know, um, could I ask you how old? Say, yes, child, I'm 106. I'm 110. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a 
looking at I would not have given him more than 70 or 75. Wow. Yeah. And that's when I started really meeting people who had such knowledge. And I realized the more you go away from the capital, away from the cities, Mm -hmm. you have geniuses Mm -hmm. whose opinion, whose positions are never taken into consideration. Absolutely. And they have a great deal of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I walked. I remember one time uh, came, coming back from a trip. Hmm. Excuse me. We have to stop for a couple minutes. It is 12 12. Mm-hmm. Every day of my life at 12 12, I repeat the same words solidarity and unity among all the children of Africa throughout the planet Earth. Solidarity and unity among all the children of Africa throughout the planet Earth. Solidarity and unity among all the children of Africa throughout the planet Earth. I hope next time we are together and we're saying it, that all of you will be saying it with us. Absolutely. It takes our word to set out the energy and put things in their places. So let's begin by using the power we have. Thank you. (coughs) Beautiful, Mama. I close this chapter. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And it's good to have that context as well. You know, the way you're talking about the the elders, you know, being in their hundreds, it's almost like the new 20s, you know. Everybody there is just of that age. And now if, if you look at us and how many people check out from the 40s, the 50s, from this lamp, that lamp, you know, it says it says a lot. It says a lot about how, yeah, um, beneficial the progress has been or otherwise may not have been. And then the other thing too that I love about your methodology, eh, Mama Bayina, you know, because often, um, you know, being from, I guess, being uh, trained in a certain type of institution and being told, you know, you can only do social research this way, that way, you know, um, whoever uh, was from Europe, whenever, these are the, the the set rules by which you can gather information. And it is, is, is not, not altogether true. You know, what I loved about your approach as well is the fact that it almost sounds how you've incorporated the oral tradition. And that is a continuation of, of our own cultural heritage in that regard, you know. It wasn't a, a, a longitudinal study or what's, what's the other names? It's so many years ago since I was I was in the institution, so I can't remember. But I loved it. From all the, the responses and the recounting of the history, you know, it continues um, a form of oral tradition now being placed in, in a space of um, what we might call, quote, unquote, academic research. So... Yep, for me, I loved it. Let me ask those in the audience um, just a few seconds, Mama Bayina. Yes, absolutely, uh, TN, we must listen to the elders, most definitely, you know, because um, what what it is that um, gives us the, should we say, criteria to say who's qualified to speak on a subject or not. Do you always need letters after your name to be able to be a a repository of, of knowledge? You know, these, these these are the type of questions that we have to ask. And this is why um, I love them. We've not gone into it yet, um, but we're about to. So not to worry. Let me let me get some of the love um, from the family. Thank you all once again um, for being here. Um, I'll read from Brother Imani Nasu. Shikamu, respectful greetings, Mama, Mama Bello, Naham Jambo, Ancestral Voices, Najama. Okay. Blessings from the UK, ancestral voices and kindred from the UK. Give thanks, Brother Imani. Your, your dedicated support. You're always here. We appreciate the love. Um, Thank you. We must bring to attention that Brother Imani Nassar from England was a very active and efficient member of the team who organized King Henry's birthday in 2022. Beautiful. We met for three months every every Sunday, every week, and he really took charge. Thank you very much, Brother Imani Nassar. Bravo. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, and I also have to thank him again and again. He's so dedicated in his support for the work that we do, uh, whether via ancestral voices or even just communal and the political space. So we hail up the brother. Um, you know, and um, we, we we have another surprise of another UK-based brother, um, but that will come 
in its own time. So, uh, Mama Baina, uh, moving on, yeah. there's a, a few things that uh, I want to ask you about. Um, and, you know, without also giving too much away, because as, yeah, you know, those who've tuned in to us many a time, it's critical that we can support our own work. The other thing that's also great about seeing works like this is what we call power lies primarily first in information. Um, it's, it's the ability to sometimes use information, you know, whether you use it to manipulate others, whether you use it to maintain a, a particular condition, so many things. But the first most important thing is those who produce leave themselves with beyond more than a vestige of power because it's something that can last beyond them um, and their own physical lives. So I'm, I don't want to give too, too, too much away. Um, but that, what I'm going to say is in reading this book, for me, myself, what I will call ancestral memory, you know, Western science will call it a, a, a genetic memory. Things are walking in reading this book. And there are so many connections that I've made um, to other areas um, of the black story worldwide, uh, for lack of a better word. You know, that word just came is so simple. I have to put it in there. And the first place I'm going to start off, Mama Bayina, and that's what we're talking about again. For me, what I see you doing with the extension of oral tradition fitting nicely and directly into publishing and uh, research of today. The next thing I'll pick up on is the conditions in which um, the esteemed emperor was born. And when I got to that part of the book, because I've never read an account of how um, Jean-Jacques de Céline came into this world. But in reading that, um, and again, the synchronicity between Agbara Toya being there in that moment and when he's born and even what his mother, the journey that she's on at the time. For me, everything there symbolized liberation and freedom. Um, you know, because I will implore everybody, please get a copy of this book. Um, I will let Mama Bayina share as much as possible without obviously giving out everything there is in the book. Remember, you support uh, the book. You're just not supporting Mama Bayina. You're also supporting all her work in, in Haiti, yeah, with her, her, her work uh, through Foundation Felicité. So Mama Bayina, please, if you would, just kindly give us um, a few bits because I love that aspect. Everything about that birth moment for me symbolized this guy is about liberation and freedom. So over to you, Mama Bayina. Thank you. Thank you. Brother, good evening. Uh, every one of us, we, the first to me, the first mindset that this change that happened for me is to make me become aware that life is not about human beings. Mm -hmm. The creation is all living forms. And we are in this dance of life together. Uh, being born under a mango tree is different from being born under the palm tree Absolutely. or the uh, orange tree because mm -hmm. each tree will bring whatever they bring to that birth. Mm -hmm. And it also made me realize that we already made poor being born within four walls in a house or a hospital. We start off with such a deficit, mm -hmm. not being born in nature with the worms, with the butterfly, with the birds, with the this and the that, and you know everything that, that is all the very different expressions of life. So once we are born that way, so it's already a huge thing. Now, these two warrior women, the warrior woman who's pregnant, who decides that her child will not be born in the presence of chains and beatings and took her big belly across rivers, mountains, whatever, whatever, whatever she, whatever she would need to go and give birth in a particular space. That is a warrior mother doing this work. Then she's gonna meet with another warrior, a military warrior who has not only the military know-how, but also as it is in Dahomey, 
all military people have training, have to also learn medicine. So you have to know how to heal when your work is to hurt, maim, and kill. So in order to be a complete person, in order for your soul to be balanced, you must be trained in both system, both the, the front and the back. So that's how we, uh, you know, to me, the meeting of those two women sharing information and then helping with the birth and then the birth and then the mom becoming very much aware that her energies had gone so low that she would not be raising her child. Mm -hmm. So before the energy would go further down, she hands the child over to the military mom. And I also appreciated that she never asked him to call her mom and she wanted to have children. But it's Tant Toya, Aunt Toya. All his life is what he called her. So obviously he told, she told him about his mother and nourish that relationship with that mother who was no longer visible, but very present. Absolutely. And, and even in, in, in the training and different things that they would do, that she would do for him, she was like, your mother wanted that. Your mother said, I must teach you freedom. I must teach you how to live in freedom. So see, it was never, I'm doing this because I want it. Nobody takes credit for somebody else, some from someone, each give to whoever, whether you're present or not, the credit is given. So to me, that was one of the most important part, uh, which I hope I, I convey in yeah. talking about his birth. Yes, yes. The two women were not from the same ethnic group in Africa. That's right. They tried several languages, both spoke just several languages, but they tried and tried until they find one that they could more or less communicate in mm -hmm. and use that. So that to me, um, so they brought a lot and he spoke tons of languages. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Now that even that aspect of his life, which I'll get back to as, as well um, later in the show, but I mean, there's so much we might end up talking about, I'll forget. So I just mentioned it here in the sense that the one of the things I got from reading about the character of the Celines was is it, someone who's seeking to improve himself, you know, someone who's seeking to, to mend their physical environment to 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 what his intentions are and in a, in a sense have the best within that space. You know, and one of the ones you, you just mentioned there was the number of languages um, uh, he could speak, you know, because in, in some of the other works uh, that I've read. Um, for instance, the Black Jacobin, you can see that there was, well, from the written record, this is not me saying that, that there seemed to be this uh, aversion towards the Selena's almost being this, in a sense, a less Western cultured person to, to say, you know, he was, he, he was more, I don't know, yeah, African, <laughs> as if that was an insult. Uh, yeah, so it, it was good to, to read. That. Mm -hmm. Very true. And just about all the books, you see, yes. even uh, one book in IT. L'homme de rien, it's written in French. Timoléon Boutus, the author, really admires Dessaline. But his religious Catholic conditioning would have him say stupid things like, you know, oh, yeah, Dessaline did this, that, and that. But had he been raised in the Catholic Church, he would have turned the other cheek at this point. He would have done this. He would have done, please. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's, but that's, you know, it's, it's through and through that we have that, mm. you know, the people, and you know, what's so funny, mm. of course, we are so-called Catholic with total ignorance of the Catholic history. We do not know even their history. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the people who did the first crusade, the second crusade, the third crusade, the fourth crusade, the fifth crusade, the sixth crusade, the seventh crusade, to go and steal and kill and pillage what others have. Yes. These are the same people who did the 30 year war among themselves, the 100 year war among themselves. 
the what they call the first world war, which is fact is not a world war at all because it is purely a Euro Christian war. They call it the second world war, but it's in fact the second Euro Christian war. So these people who've created slavery, torture in all forms to people who have genocided the original people of the Americas. And these people tell you that the good Christian way is to turn the other cheek and you actually swallow it. That's right. When did they turn any cheek? Yeah. But that's, no. it is from that mindset that the Jacobins is written, even though they claim to be uh, communist or socialist or something. Yes, yes, no, um, it, it, I, I found that very, well, from even then I was like, oh, this, 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 this sounds a bit, um, you know, you know when something just doesn't sit right with your spirit. Um, and I even remember reading another passage, it's, it's been a decade and a bit more now. So anyone, excuse me if I misquote, but I remember he was talking about how, um, De Celine, uh, would be attacking certain brigands on behalf of, uh, I forget the name of the last French general who was around, but then what seemed later, um, what well, later they came to find out that it was rather a ruse. And in so doing, he was more building alliances rather than trying to rout them. And for me, even reading that, I just at the time thought, it sounds to me more like they just wanted him to go do the bidding of, I guess, those who were more African centered and wanted liberation in its entirety, rather than, I guess, those who've been through part of the system and just want a comfortable space in it you know true yeah yep, that's the big problem is it is the same principle operates in all of our, our streets yeah. all whether you take the home benin ghana any part of africa any part of asia we must be suspectful even myself Mm -hmm. I say to myself, five years from now, I will be criticizing this book mm -hmm. because hopefully I would have learned more and gained greater understanding and I will see some things that I might have put in there that really didn't have, that's not the proper way to, of looking at it. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And this is another thing that you mentioned in the book, uh, which I've loved from. I remember when you 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 were delivering um, the Know Thyself um, um, history and it was about questioning and the fact that we should question just about everything. So I loved where even in the book, you also go and give us opportunity to, to question, to ponder on um, the record or the so-called record left behind and uh, how accurate it is if you compare it with 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 other stories or narratives um around there because questioning is a um a very powerful form of learning you know and learning for self i believe because you're you're drilling deep um into yourself you know yes yes sir yeah yes. question is the only door to knowledge actually one thing that we need to keep in mind, whatever you learn by heart, all rote learning is not learning. Okay? You've memorized this information, but you do not know it. You will know it when you start to question it, open it up, dissect it. Then you'll come to know. But just being able to recite, no, 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 nah, no, that's not knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, uh, externalized knowledge. I, it takes me back to the words of um, Subon Fusome and Malidoma talking about the elder saying that, you know, you can't put, knowledge is not something that should be external to yourself. It should be something that's intricately part of yourself. Um, in speaking, in breathing, in thinking, in seeing. That's that's how knowledge manifests. You can't go and put it all in an object external, you know? Um, and we see that even with technological development in the regard that we have uh, culturally, socially, people who can remember 256 elements of binary communication. But for us to see that binary communication 
working in the Western framework, you need a computer because that binary computing is again still external, you know. Um, so yeah, no, those, yep. it's very interesting, you know. And yeah, Mama Bayina, I'm actually going to read a part of the book, uh, just a little part, uh, because I said for me, yes, there's a lot of gems. Um, and you know, the audience do bear with us, Every, everyone will get their chance to come in with their own questions. Um, and this goes back to again, for me so much spiritual symbolisms i saw and um, the next thing was also in looking again that looking down upon as if he was less educated um, let's find out what this education means um, i'm going to read a a bit where a part in the book let me see this is um the the 10th fact which is um jacques emperor first of haiti and the nobility and this is a um a, an instruction sent to the, the Ministry of Public Instruction. So I read, <clears throat> um, among the Celine's other objectives were, reminds the Minister of Public Instruction that we should avoid setting up an educational system by which we would find ourselves in a few years facing the same people we have just fought off. We must always keep in mind, he said, that Rochambeau, Leclerc, had received an education that had trained them to hate us and to want to destroy us because we are blacks. Beware, he said, that by copying the French education system, you are only teaching our children to repeat racist attitudes and behaviors against their own. Yeah, um, you know, I, 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 I found this very, very, very um, solid uh, because first of all, it, it puts to question this idea again of edu edu educated. What does that mean? And what are you holding in your head about yourself? You know, um, this is, I don't know, hundreds of years before um, civil rights, before um, George Washington, not, not George Washington Carver, uh, Woodson, you know, talking about yeah. uh, the whole educational movement for African-Americans. So if this is a man who is as so-called illiterate as he is, this is very profound understanding of, how to change minds and behavior patterns in society. Yes. Mm -hmm. Carter Godwin Woodson. Yes, that's the great guy who really studied up on how we should go about rebuilding our mindset. That's a great, great author. Uh, one of his famous books, The Miseducation of the Negro. It's really worth reading even more so today. Absolutely. Yes, uh, right. That's that's where I fell in love with Dessaline. Mm -hmm. It's when I started seeing the general, I think he was born to be a military guy, mm -hmm. raised by a military woman. So what? Yeah, he could do it with his eyes closed. Mm -hmm. But the visionary, the psychologist. Yes. The great, the, the person who was living in hell and able to conceive of a paradise. That's where I, you know, his sense of justice. I mean, one such, uh, I don't know if it's in the book because I, you know, this book has been edited, not by me. So <laughs> I'm not sure what's still in there or not. But uh, there is a, in Shakmel, he was in a battle. Mm -hmm. and, um, at some point they, they, they they blow the horn to say end of you know retreat stop the stop the fighting and two of his men were still fighting against this other colonel colonel primaire and the enemy camp right so Dessaline came to and seeing them about to finish him up and stop the the fight and says you know you two you should be ashamed and you will be uh, tomorrow we'll deal with you but you colonel You've been a brave man. This is the enemy guy he's talking to. Right. <laughs> You've been very brave. And my men were not, did not treat you fairly. Uh, so from this day on, any uh, uh, medical expenses, mm -hmm. I'll, I, it will be on me. Send me all your medical bills and blah, 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 blah. That's, this is a man on the battlefield talking to his enemy. Mm -hmm. Because once they blow that horn, everybody knows the stopping must the bite the back the fighting must stop. That's right. But his men disobeyed. 
So mm -hmm. they won't pay the consequences. Yeah. But this guy, he is, he's respecting him, giving her and helped him and did everything that he, he could do. And I just that sense of justice right. that we have, we don't see this in this society. That's not the way this society functions. This is an unjust society that we live in. We have to be aware of that. Absolutely. So even when dealing with somebody who's being unfair to you, Mm -hmm. You have to make sure you can rise up and still act justly. Because if what you are aiming for, not just justice for yourself, you're aiming for justice for our planet. Yes. So we have to practice it if we want it to be. Beautiful. Beautiful, Mama Bayina. Yeah, no, as I said, I share your same sentiments as, as of now because I, I, I'm beyond in love, you know. Um, I, I love Dr. Amos Wilson for his, obviously, he, but he's also trained and he comes from a, a, a particular uh, academic tradition, but he takes his research and makes it relevant, makes it practical. And in reading those, th those bits from, yeah, someone who has not gone to study pedagogy or androgy or whatever else, have this vision, um, yes, I can see a lot also why there was the anti and um, but also following along the the line of this um, um, um should we call it spiritual um exploration or understandings you know um can you tell us a bit about because we find that jean jacques de Céline is a blacksmith um, and, and we know in in our traditions also which particular energy is associated with the, the the blacksmith and what that means because for me i think there's another one of the practical uses we can take away in terms of our character development. So would you like to uh, speak on that for us, uh, Mama Bayina? Sure. He is, he's both a blacksmith and uh, further down the road, he's going to be a wood carver. Mm -hmm. So no matter how you take it, the man is all about transformation. All the skills that he learns is about transformation. He's also a fabulous cook, which is another element mm -hmm. of transformation. Yes. <laughs> another mm -hmm. expression of mm -hmm. transformation so uh the blacksmith as we all know uh ogu is jay is the first representation representation of the principle of ogu mm -hmm. in our belief system so as soon as we see blacksmith right away you know ogu ferai comes to mind and all the songs associated with him comes right right to that uh so what me, the way I have seen, I have I've come to understand Dessaline, he started off a child that just don't follow rules. That's the number one element. If you're going to transform anything, then you don't immediately submit to everything. You just have to, or, you know, if, you, if you're going to be able to look at it, then you cannot dive into it. True. Uh, in fact, I also saw that I'm diving, I'm a little bit but my twin i have twin two sets of twin granddaughters mm -hmm. and uh the youngest ones uh, what i observed was when for example well, we took them to go learn to swim they were nine years nine months old mm -hmm. and maida jumped right in followed the instructions my moon i said no and the whole lesson she did not get in the water right uh, when we took them to for Taekwondo, Maida went right along with the program. Mamuna said, nope, she don't want to take lessons. Why you don't want to take that? I don't like the voice of this guy, the teacher. <laughs> wow, okay. That's a reason. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. An entire session. So the mom said, okay, fine. So you'll do your math while your sister is doing this. And the whole session, she did not, she wasn't interested. The next session, she jumped in. But in both cases, what I see, mm -hmm. she becomes much better than the one who had one or two sessions ahead. Wow. Mm -hmm. Today, my Muna, who at nine months, we, no, yes, who refused to go in the water, mm -hmm. today, she is ranked the fastest uh, swimmer in Georgia. <laughs> yeah. And she yeah. gets gold medals from, I don't know, six, seven, or eight different you know, tons of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you see, the Ogu principle, you must study the thing. You must question it. You master it inside, in your heart, in your mind, before you touch it. Mm -hmm. 
that's very much an ogu attitude. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, I don't have all the elements to say that about Dessaline, but I am certain this is the person when you, when you tell him to do this, he, he look at you. You know, I ain't gonna do this now. I don't, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> yeah. So questioning is key and learning to raise our children. It's so important mm. to observe them because yeah. they know who they are better than we know who they are going to be. We're trying to figure out what they're gonna be, but they already know who they are. It's already there. Absolutely. If you look at two and three and four year olds playing, you will see, if you say, for example, oh, I have a headache. If one of them comes to you and says, a headache, mommy, grandma, let me rub it for you. Let me kiss it for you. That's your doctor. That's your medical person. Mm -hmm. They not even hear you. Yeah. Okay. The lawyer will come when two people fight. No, 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 no. it was this one. Blah, 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 blah. That's your law person. Right there. So then feed that once you see it. Don't mm -hmm. say, my child has to be a doctor. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. The child tells you who they are. Now feed on it, and they will, will be so much more easier to raise this, this, this child. Give him toys, give him books, give her whatever, whatever, whatever is necessary to encourage that which they already know. No, absolutely. Absolutely, that's beautiful. Empower and push, compound and and, and make even um, bigger or or expand wider. So, um, family, we we will move on. Um, at this point, I'll just put um, I'll just put that in there. I know um, a few of you have asked. Um, yes, Pierre, I believe that has been um answered. The Celine was a child of Ogun, um, representing that principle of justice. Um, and transformation, um, in a sense, fi finding your own road rather than being molded um, along one. Um, and was it Pierre who also asked? Mama Bayina, um, uh, Jay Ortiz, um, would like to have a spiritual reading with you at some point. And um, apologies, the only email I had that I could send him was this one. Um, I know there's another one that you may have, but hopefully it shouldn't yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. But an uh, uh, easier way uh, for any anything at all, go to my website, yes. not the Fondation's website. Fondation's website is one, you know, my website, bb at bainabello.com. Then you will see the possible services and whatnot. Let me type that in there, please, my Baina Bello. So that's bb at Baina Bello. So b, uh -huh, at Baina Bello .com. Fantastic. So family, that, that's two websites. Let me add this to um this the banner as well so i can display it um everyone can see it let me one second yeah so mama bayina um can i ask what would you say are some of the qualities we don't need um, a whole exhaustive list but what are some of the qualities that we can take from the ancestor uh De Celine? That have practical use for us today and then we can get into some more um esoteric significance um, that i've noticed um from the sure. show that i've read mm -hmm. well to me what really hits you in the face right away when you start looking at this man for who he is is discipline so i often, often say the d in gasoline is discipline all right so discipline courage determination these are absolute oh yeah see how big i am on these things i gave you an email rather than <laughs> a website <laughs> thank you the smart person who put on the website <laughs> thank you very much okay um yeah so that so we we're saying that uh, discipline is the number one thing if you say you are an admirer of Dessaline or you this and that, or that you're a child of Ogu and there is no discipline in your behavior, forget it. That's not true. You're lying to yourself. You're not a child of Ogu. There is no way. Because the step number one is the discipline. 
Yeah. It is with discipline that you can build courage. Mm-hmm. It is because of the courage, the application of courage, that you can develop vision, mm-hmm. ability to see far. Uh, one of the things that came a lot in in the research, the old uh, research, is people would say that uh, Dessaline is a child who loved to climb the tallest tree and stand, stay on there and look far over, far ahead. Mm-hmm. You know. And that from a very young age, that was one of the tasks he had in the Maroon society, the Maroon village, was to, you know, the youngest ones were asked, you know, were trained to climb up the tree and keep a lookout if there's anybody about to invade the, the village. So that was the task of the young. There's a task for everyone. That's another thing we need to understand. Life is function. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you are in the family, okay, uh, let's say I come to visit at uh, Brother Ogudipe's home. I'm staying with them for two weeks. And so I sit in the living room. I look at the television. I read my books. I go on my computer. I type my stuff because I'm a very busy woman, you know. I do this and I do. And there isn't one day that if a child is crying, I'm not going to pick up the, the child and do or if there's a food, you know, there's time. Uh, Verona has not yet returned from work, so I, I can't start. The food was right there. I see what they were about to prepare, and yeah. you know, yeah. I can get, get it started. Absolutely. Uh, they, they dashed out for work and left the vacuum there. They didn't get a chance to. I could do that because once you are part of the family, there must be functions that you fill for the community. Absolutely. All the things you do for yourself is fine. That's your business. But what we want to know, what do you contribute to the well-being of the community within which you are right now? And that's the thing a lot of us seem to miss out. And that's where we see that in a maroon society, for example, everybody has a task. The 105-year-old person has his task, and a six-year-old and a four-year-old have their task. Whatever is going to happen, everyone will contribute. So the family should be the same way. Mm -hmm. The community should be the same way. We cannot say, I'm too busy. There's no such thing. Everybody is busy. The heart is busy, but it still has to send blood to every single part. The lungs is busy, but if if it's not sending good oxygen everywhere it should, you Mm -hmm. soon will be sick. (laughs) Indeed. Yeah, and the whole community will have problems. Right. Okay. Right. So, Dessaline, discipline, courage, right. vision, determination, engagement. Mm-hmm. Don't do it today and then forget it tomorrow. Hey, right. assume your responsibility. So, those are the tasks, the, 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 the qualities we would call them in a person, but mm-hmm. it's the same elements. In a community, it are the principles that make the community strong. Absolutely. The family is a brick. The wall of the community will be built with many families. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In beautiful. Africa, we called it a clan, that mm-hmm. first wall. Mm-hmm. Many clans come together and form an ethnic group. Several ethnic groups create a nation. Mm -hmm. And nations can combine and make empires. Absolutely. Or kingdoms. We can choose what style nation we want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have to be clear on from the one person, the one family, everything else happened. And the family is the first government. Yes, indeed. Yes, Those are the things I learned in studying Dessaline. Fantastic. Fantastic. Family, are you listening? Um, I hope we're all taking notes. And, you know, Mama Bayina, uh, I love her consistency because I remember 2013 or 14, she was telling us, you know, 
um about discipline and this you, you know as she says so she she is you know and she i remember the quote is in my head spirituality is like a muscle you know the more you you work at it the better it gets because it's spirituality is like a muscle you need that discipline you know and here we are coming on 10 plus years and we're, we're hearing the me message resonating once again it's a beautiful thing again we're discussing our, uh, one of our greatest ancestors um jean jacques de Celine. again i will encourage each and everyone to read this book um if if you followed our work for a while you know then you know that we not only are we big on the concept of ancestral memory but it's because th this is a universal principle you know it's it's in each and every one of us and what we make space for in our consciousness is what opens up space for even more of that knowledge um, to, to, to come into being. And for those of you who just joined that recently and may have missed the earlier announcement that I made, I said one of the first things that hit me um, just about the universality of just energy, ourselves, our spirit beings, uh, is, is, is highlighted in the moment and the conditions around which Jean-Jacques de Céline's was brought into this world. You know, and it fits exactly with the understanding within our knowledge systems that the conditions of your birth can foretell what your future destiny or your purpose you are about to live will be. We find a, a very synchronistic um, experience within the book. So family, you don't have a copy, please go get it. Google, it's on Amazon now. Um, and I will be, what, what I will do, because th there's another beautiful um, experience that happens in the book that I'll be talking about again, again, which has a spiritual significance. And most importantly, it symbolizes a lot about what has happened to uh, Black self-empowerment and our ability to rise above this oppression we've had for centuries, uh, years, uh, centuries now. However, before I do that, I will step out um, slightly and um, bring forth a question. I know I'm slightly ahead of my question, but... The brother Brian uh, Brian K is at work, and he still made time to to come onto the show to sneak in. Um, or, or was it Brian, or have I mixed him up? Oh no, it's actually Martin. Martin is the one at work, and he still managed to sneak in to join us. Give thanks for that, Martin. I appreciate that. Thank you for your time. And um, let me put Brian K's question in now, Mama Bayina. Um, and then uh, let's then we can come back to it. So Brian K says, Mama Bayina. Could you expound on the Celine's decision to physically slash spiritually cleanse Haiti of whiteness and to legally slash politically baptize all its citizens, including the Polish troops, as black? Fantastic question. Uh, we need to find a word other than baptize. Okay, uh, well, it, we have naming ceremonies in Africa. We talk of naming our children, naming the land, naming the country, but perhaps it's, we need something stronger. We should look for it, but definitely let's get away from baptize. But it's a, it is a fabulous question. Yes. As we just said a minute ago, we said life is about functioning. Uh, we don't care. We, uh, we, nobody goes around and say my heart is pretty or my lungs are nice or uh, blah blah no what we want is for lungs to pump air correctly right proportion right density right speed etc cetera, etc cetera. we want blood uh heart to pump blood efficiently etc cetera, etc cetera. so the same we want of people so even that whole concept of white black purple etc is not from us because it's too limited to the derm, to superficial appearances. So yes, it is in the first constitution that all citizens, in fact, it starts by saying, all these naming of um, mulatto, Chabin, Grimaud, and all this other stuff, all those skin naming determining people, is forbidden from this day forward. From now on, all children of IT will be known as, will be referred to as black with the generic term of black, okay? Whether your eyes are blue, your hair blonde, you were born from whatever, under whatever sky. Once you are Asian citizen, then you are black. Hmm, 
people were, what's, what does that mean? How come? How can we say everybody is one? He is asking you to use your brain to look at things differently, to, lose your, to use your heart. And so people kept asking, what is, well, what does black mean? And Desalyn said, black are those who fight for freedom. Once you fight for freedom, then you're a different person. You're not, I don't care what you look like. If you're black and you own slaves, then you're not black. We have to figure out what to call you, but you're not black. But once you do fight for freedom, true to true, not make believe, not pretending, then you are black. And that is the way Dessaline opened up a new mental structure, which of course we did not follow. We went right back after his assassination. We had uh, rulers who were proud to be lighter than this one and my hair is more this and your hair is more that. So then we get to on the road that lead to where IT is today. But this was a vital decision to say that all the children of this nation, we are but one family and all of us are black. And black was something you wanted to be. You're a freedom fighter. You're determined for justice. You're determined for transforming a slave situation into a freedom situation. He went further, even in his letterhead. Stack, emperor of IT, comma, empire of freedom. So what the man is all about, what his aim is, is freedom. It's not about what skin color, what this and that. Furthermore, in the constitution of 1805, the imperial constitution, it clearly states that the only advantages or privilege anyone can claim to has to be in accord with your contribution to freedom. <laughs> okay? yeah. Brother Jack, was doing racketeering, selling guns on the side to both sides of the war, etc. And now he wants to be general. Brother Paul was fighting for freedom. He doesn't have to want to be general. He will be ranked. He will receive the rank that he, and that's the thing. And the men went further to see the depth of his mindset for freedom. When he was now named uh, emperor, so then the people who were taking care of the details and whatnot say, well, you know, now you'll have a, on top of your general salary, you will have the emperor's salary. He said, no, out of the question. Your wife as an empress will receive this salary. No way, I've always taken care of my wife, she's fine. She don't need no money from the state. Use it for those who have he refused, he refused his emperor's salary. He refused a salary for his wife. Uh, but in that same constitution, there is, a, there is an article saying that after the emperor's death, the empress will be provided a pension. Hmm. While he is alive, you don't, she don't need a dime from nobody. He also refused that his children should become emperor after him. He says, yes. that is an unjust situation. No, after me, you will elect the next emperor. Now listen to this. Emperor will be elected based on their contribution to freedom. Yeah. No, that, that, that I found that very fascinating, you know, especially um, these days where, you know, I can only speak from closer to home. Um, we have a president who, who enacted um, a salary for his wife um, and he had to take a lot of uh, 
uh, people making noise for that to you know so if anything we've witnessed we've witnessed them um, the yeah the a downward decline and mama Bayina, in my opinion and experience of course uh, but i think everyone can see it. it's why we're, we're here under a so-called global crisis but as everybody seems to be having this so-called crisis there's some people who apparently are making um upwards of billions per day um, and yeah. you know the statistics are out there uh, there's a website called war on want you know those who like numbers you can go check that but the most important thing i'll tell you is what that book reminds us of we also need to make a lot of time for going within uh, you know the chaos outside is the chaos outside yeah you you find that balance within you find that that chaos is it doesn't seem as turbulent as it is because you're not allowing a your consciousness to start receiving all the types of um fear and um, based paradigms and modules to to you know raise your spirit a certain way to get you to act a certain way you no longer become a a, a puppet of um quote unquote white juju <laughs> the psychic and systematic and institutionalized um systems of oppression that we sadly face so at this point i will be um opening up um the the floor as it were to to general questions and i'll be also highlighting to our our special guest who i'll be inviting in to join the conversation quite soon um and before i go on to that i'll read and um, brian's comment brian's um tn actually responds to brian saying cleansing the country needs to take place now we need to learn from this Celine. the first constitution needs to be restated black is powerful everything is birthed from blackness and you know mama Bayina, even reading that uh, part of the book where he he renounces this hereditary um presidentship or leadership you know again uh, I, I, I'm fairly sure in this time we didn't have this model of what perhaps a democratic country might be. So where is this man getting all these ideas that are now systems yeah, or, or, of practice? Because, you know, even within that um, I attempt to say we're all black, you can see that almost as a let's stop giving ourselves opportunities to, to, to find fake superiority over each other. Yes, let, let, let's find a way to live in balance and equanimity where you do not see yourself as better than me because, you know, either you become lighter than me or because you've inherited uh, your family's blood money from generations before. So, again, for me, there's also that element of is this ancestral memory going uh, further on? Because I believe who, who already put it in there? Yes, Brother Imani says it. Communalism rather than rampant individualism. So, for me, again... It's not too hard to believe that this would have all been in the training that he would have received from um, Auntie Toya, because these are principles, you know, and this is how we pass them on and they come. Because there is no, uh, again, Western schooling, he's gone to start coming out with perhaps these, these frameworks of thinking. So, again, this idea of education equal intelligence, oh, no, we, we can discount that. Please go on, Mama Bainer, if, you, if you're about to say something, I'll carry yes, on. Sir. Uh, absolutely. But your comment is totally correct. And the, the comment that was uh, Brian's comment was definitely so. Now, your question, where did he get it from? Mm -hmm. Yes. On one level, you have Tantoya's presence teaching him. What did she teach him? Tantoya taught him the history of all the Black rulers that she knew of. Uh, Tantoya taught him just general principles of behavior in Dahomey before invasion by Euro Christians. But more than that, uh, I have learned now in, in the spiritual realm that a leader of a, a nation, uh, a, uh, a ruler of a clan, can never is not born from nine months of pregnancy. Mm. The process is much longer. Mm -hmm. It may take a whole century. Mm -hmm. There had to be that great, 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 great grandpa here and this particular great, 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 great grandma and then this one and then that one and then that one in order to have this particular child. Right. right. It's not made from just contact between two people. Mm -hmm. Which is anyway the way we never saw 
marriage as a thing between two people. It was two families who came together. Mm -hmm. So even for an ordinary everyday life, it takes two families to bring a new couple and a new family. Then we can imagine how many families, generations of families it would take to build the right ruler, the right leader, the right person for a particular specific task. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that we, we are so unaware of. We need to understand. Baina was born on uh, March, 1948. Yes, that's fine. But that's just a particular detail. That's this body here. But Baina might have been in the process for the past six, seven, eight, ten generations. Absolutely. Uh, you are already present in your great grandma's DNA. Mm -hmm. And we had the power to look at great grandma and say, great grandma, three generations down, you're going to have a child that's going to do this, 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 and that. They claim with the DNA, they should at some point. Now they're learning how to do, they take the great grandchild and say, mm -hmm. well, you have a great grandma. I don't bet on it. Okay, we could take yeah. it for the grain of salt. All right. Yeah, absolutely. But they are not yet able to take the great grandma and say, okay, three generations down, here's what you're going to have. And that's but that we were there way back then. So there are certain training that you get. When we look at Africa as a whole, you look at, for example, in the Congo, the, the, the uh, true ruler had to be able to predict the next, mm -hmm. the, his heir. That's right. Then if he had 55 children, but he had to know. So there was a training for that. It didn't happen by chance. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen because that's my favorite ch child or my favorite nephew. Or... No, 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 no. There had to be particular qualities built into this person. Right. That's why this whole election thing is, it is <laughs> what it is. Yeah. But it's very limited as a way of choosing leaders. Yes. We yes. must learn to know ourselves better. Mm -hmm. so we can choose leaders with greater depth. It's not about diplomas. It's not about, I don't know how you speak French or English. We don't care. That's right. So much more to it. Mm -hmm. so we have to develop these. So, yes, this, these are people with insight. The same way we, we clearly identify Dessaline as an Ugu, mm -hmm. we also identify Toussaint as a Legba. Right. And if you understand life is about functions, this business of saying, oh, if Toussaint had done, had given us the independence, we would be better off. There was no way he could have given you independence. That's he right. does not, he's not built for that. Mm -hmm. He yeah. does not have what it takes. His job as a Legba was to open the gate, trace the road for the Ogu to come in and lead you to independence. And he knew it. This is it. This is it. This is it. Yeah, no. Um, you know, there's that level of gnosis, Mama Baina. Obviously, even taking it from um to Saint's life to the Celine. And I'll come back to that final point and then we can we can move in and, and bring all the others in. Because I remember I think it was again, it would have been Jacobins or maybe um um irritated Jamie. But um they said that for instance, for um to Saint, he knew that perhaps that last meeting was a setup and still went anyway. Mm -hmm. So we see people full facing their destiny uh, and this, this knowing, you know, what, you know, perhaps people might call uh, the, the intuition or, uh, or, or yeah, this, this, this sense because we're force, you know, so force can flow within you and give you a certain understanding. Um, also that uh, the Celine knew that going um, on that last trip was most likely going to be fatal and still went anyway. Now, um, in, in all my years of the little study that I've done, yes, I knew um, there was a murder and then he, his body was chopped up. 
but is unto reading this book. And again, I'm not going to give all the full details because again, if you're that interested in, in, in knowledge that empowers, invest in it. So you get the book. But the bit there that I was really interested in or didn't know was the uh, influence or the possible influence of the church. And when I read that in your book, the first connection, and again, this was said, I love the ancestral memory. And I tell everyone, you know, I, sorry, I can't give you a formula for how things will work, but you're already spirit. Nobody needs to give you formula. Just go inside and keep working with self. Everything you need comes through that consciousness. It's not a cop out. I'm actually telling you the truth. I could charge you 10,000 pounds and give you that same knowledge, but you don't need to because we, how we do spirituality is about self-empowerment. You need to find yourself. And again, this is from just reading a book. So when I read that bit, Mama Baina, um, and I got into the, 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 the influence or possible influence of the church, it took me back to an Asian African story. And um, again, this is my impression uh, of the, the story of um, the murder of Osa or Osiris by his uncle as a means to usurp his life destiny. Because I do not understand why someone in, in, in Haiti, however many hundred of years ago, needs to be killed in such a ritual fashion. You know, it, the, 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 there's nothing that anyone can tell me uh, for me to say that this is not somewhat a religious a, a, a ceremony used symbolically to hold down the liberation after that and um, th th this is my where my understanding has progressed to after reading that particular aspect there because it's, it's like someone has has gone to reenact a ritual that drama of millennia ago but in haiti and why not because Sankara wasn't killed this way lumumba wasn't killed this way um you know all the other should we say continental um, African revolutionaries I can, I can mention were remembered this way. Why this Celine and in this place? Please feel free to, you know, if, if you can share uh, your, 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 your thoughts on that. But family, again, as I said, the ancestral memory is real. This is just from reading that and some of the thoughts that have bubbled up. So over to you, Mama Baena. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but actually, Sankara was killed this way. Right. Lumumba okay. was killed this way. Mm -hmm. Some nuances, mm -hmm. but each case is mm -hmm. chopped into 14 or 17 pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. Buried in a way that yeah. is trying to not make them uh, that you can't get back to the parts. That's right. Yeah, so it, it is pretty regular. In fact, you a Christian practice that a lot. Mm. They don't always say it when they do. Mm -hmm. When I went to Peru, went to the, the cathedral in Lima. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in visiting cathedrals. Don't ask me why. I agreed to go to visit the cathedral. The funny thing is, some door was closed, there was this, there was that. We ended up entering through a door that people don't enter. Okay. And the very first thing I saw was the skull of Saint Antoine de Padoue, mm -hmm. which is the first black person who became a priest right. in that nation. Mm -hmm. And he well, he made miracles, extraordinary, et cetera, et cetera. He was killed, buried in the dog cemetery, mm. and then later chopped off, and his head is preserved in the church. Right. Pra praise Jesus. <laughs> this, this, this uh, at which level and uh, at which part of any of these um, uh, 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 things do, do you know, do, do, do we then stand on this higher ground to, to label African traditions or these 
these weird and wonderful things you know if you even just thinking of of it it reminds me of that man's hand that is preserved somewhere in rome i, I went to visit it can't remember his name but again the hand is there and it's all wrinkled and caked up and and you think well, what does this have to do with this almighty you know but yes people need to pay attention to rituals and um, why juju is real um, I, I keep saying it and I would love to make it a thing because what we're dealing with on any and every level as a, 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 a psychic, sustained psychological attack that manifests in different forms of our physicality, it fits all the definitions of, of, of this misnomer they've created called juju because largely most people who are not European are zombies to Euro, um, Euro-Asian thinking and, and power systems. So yes, we are. Um, we're under a juju spell, if you will, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So yes, Mama Bayina, would you, um, these are not just closing words, but would you like to bring us to settle down at a point? Because at this point, we'll, we'll change up the energy and bring in our, 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 our UK surprise guest. And then we'll move on to, because originally the show, um, we have the brother, let me find his name here, because I have to hail him up. Outstanding brother, er, er, Eric Kambach. This brother, his support has been beyond beautiful. He purchased five DVDs, um, not for his own self, but for us to be able to share and spread the knowledge. So we decided to put together a campaign um, to let people tell us about their their thoughts um, and reflections on the importance of um, um, the, the, the Haitian, the success of the Haitian War of Independence. So I'd like to hear you, our brother, Eric. Thank you very much. Um, we are now going to move into that segment where we discuss this. This DVD is going to be given for free, but we're going to now find out the best way to give it because something interesting happened when uh, we started the campaign. So it's with that in mind that uh, I would like to warmly welcome um, our brother um, Tafadzwa, uh, most popularly known as um, Shakara. You know, Shakara needs no introduction, so I won't even attempt to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will let him introduce himself to us. A warm welcome to you, brother. Tell them why they be thankful unto the mother, father, creative life force of the universe. Could Zai Mozimo Mokoro give praises unto our great ancestors? Abibi Tumi, Abibi Fahodi, African liberation and African power for all African people. Uh, Aibobo. Uh, and, 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 and I learned uh, and, and a couple of years ago a sister on um on Twitter called Madame Bookman said that many uh, people in Haiti when it's the new year we greet Bon Combat, yeah, which means happy fighting, yeah, yes. because um we understand that we're still in a liberation process, a liberation fight, and so that's become my new greeting as well. So I I, I love that, you know, what I'm saying I love that consciousness that it brings to mind. So I'm 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 humbled first and foremost by the invitation, Brother Dalian, um, and the the invitation to join the panel with one such as Mama Bayina Bello no less yeah and so um you know we she knows that we appreciate her work in the uk um and uh, i was blessed to be able to meet and organize with mama a few years ago with the uh toya uh garvey um Desaline. Desalines, yeah, you know, at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we, we, we appreciate um you know the reconnection um and it's good to be here it's good to be here yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Give thanks, Brother Shakara. Um, you know, uh, putting it out there publicly. Uh, once we put the campaign out, um, for you know, th- this is a, a free campaign. You know, I've obviously showed my age because I thought, hey, that you're, you're get, getting a chance to win a free sale. All you need to do is to talk about perhaps one of the most glorious moments in quote unquote black history. And again, you know, please understand why I use the word black history instead of anything else, I suppose. What does this mean to you? And I got some very interesting responses because engagement was rather low. Now, the main thing that kept coming back to me and I found it so, it was interesting and it was also bizarre because people were like, I'm not learn, learned enough on the topic to talk about it. So then I would start to rephrase the question. I said, okay, so listen, this is all I, this is the opinion we want. What do you think is the significance that at a time when all Af- most African descended people were enslaved and under the yoke of the European, how does how a group on a landmass 
who managed to fight for their freedom. What does that mean? That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking you until they who did this, who did that. <laughs> you yourself. People are like, oh yeah, but I don't, I don't like the camera. I don't want to be seen on the camera. And I just thought, you know what? We'll leave it at it as it is. Let the energy flow the way that it yeah. is. Yeah. Like, right, I had to come and seek your help to put some fire in there. But yes. you know, I tell you what, I think your fire was too much because now they were running even more. So. <laughs> Would you kindly give us, you know, like a little, yeah, just give us a little introduction. I'll ask you that question again, and then, you know, mm. into the discussion with us. What yeah. is the significance of the success of the Haitian War of Independence to mm. in just, um, not just the Black experience, world history today? Mm. G give facts on the question, my brother. And I think first and foremost, I, I had the honor and the pleasure of being born and raised in the Pan-African community in the UK. And more specifically in a, in a black nationalist Pan-Africanist community in the UK. And, and I say that to emphasize that there are different schools of thought within Pan-Africanism, yeah? But the, from a black nationalist Pan-Africanist point of view, Haiti was central to how we shaped our political analysis and how we shaped our spiritual cultural understanding and its relationship to our political analysis. And I remember uh, as a teenager, we had the Pan-African Youth Organization. And so we used to host Pan-African Youth Days. And uh, one year I was given the task of delivering a presentation on the, the Haiti revolution, yeah? And my, my main book, you know, of my main tool of research at the time, I must've been about 15, 16, was Baba Jacob Carava's book, um, The Irritated Genie, yeah? And that's a beautiful book because he doesn't just deal with the, the history, but the philosophy of the revolution um, and the different philosophies, yeah? Um, and he juxtaposes what he refers to as the irritated genie with the phantom of liberty, yeah? The, the idea um, of, of, and in fact, you, you could juxtapose that with what um, the Osage for Kwame Nkrumah said in 1957 when he says the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the African continent. So there's this idea of what he calls sham independence juxtaposed with total liberation. You've got the irritated genie versus the phantom of liberty. Yeah? Um, and I think the, this is the lesson in it for me, that the significance of the fact that this is a victory, yeah, first and foremost, um, and we are not used to celebrating victories as African people. Yeah, this is but well, this is a victory, yeah, and and a victory that was snatched from our hands, yeah, uh, following, yeah, but a victory nonetheless. Uh, and we took the, this this liberation fight uh, to a certain point, and we haven't necessarily replicated that, um, you know, um, um, over the years since then. But beyond, as I said in in the video, um, the, the first lesson for me is the extent to which. Uh, the Pan-African nature of the revolution in it itself, yeah? Which is the fact that as Mama Bayina uh, was saying, even the, 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 the maternal figures in Dessalines life, yeah? Emperor Dessalines life, didn't come from the same people group, yeah? Uh, I'm gonna put the quotes here and say, so-called tribe, yeah? And it didn't come from the same nation, yeah? Um, and you have people that are from Dahomey, you have people that are from Oyo, you have people that are from Bakongo, you have people that are Mande, you know, you have these various different people. And then you also have people that were enslaved on different plantations, yeah? My family, Jamaica and Antigua and Jamaicans, you know, where, where more of us are becoming aware of the Haiti revolution and, and taking more pride in the fact that Bookman, yeah, was, mm. was, in, was in Jamaica before he was in Haiti, yeah? Uh, and so you got people saying that Bookman was a Jamaican. Well, there was no, there wasn't really such thing as a Jamaican at the time, but we get the point, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, Jamaicans, we do like things to boast about. So, you know, so we're taking pride in, in the fact that Bookman come from Jamaica, yeah? So, the, but, but the, the, the strength in that is that the success of Haiti is a Pan-African success, yeah? It's an example of the Pan-African liberation fight in action. And the fact that, um, what some of our scholars learned at a later date, if you look at people like Baba Sheikh Ante Diop, for example, the extent to which our culture is a cohesive factor, yes, um, in, in our capacity to develop community, in our capacity to develop nation, 
in our capacity to develop economic systems. And that's a lesson um, that, that we can learn, yeah? And then there's, there's all the different, as, as I've read more, and I, I don't consider myself an expert on Haiti, but I have read some things, yeah? Um, and as you read more, how the, 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 what we call voodoo, mm -hmm. yes? And the extent to which voodoo is a commu is a, is a, is a, is an expression of all of those people, the spiritual expression of all of those different groups of people forming and developing a unified expression, if that makes sense. Right. You're bringing those influences together because they're not antagonistic. But then that, how that informs a social system and the fact that Cecile Fatima is a mambo, but as mambo, she has a social responsibility. So she draws all of these generals together and says, listen, revolution is at hand, yeah? <laughs> so even the revolution is organized through the social system of voodoo, right. okay? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's important, yeah? And then the, 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 the name for this documentary that you have, Theology of Liberation, is so apt, yeah? Because many people have, have, have dealt with the voodoo element as though it's magical, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah? Like, you know, that they did a ceremony and called upon the, the lower, and the lower rose up from the earth, yeah? <laughs> and washed yeah. over, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But no, it was people, yeah? It was people engendering and embodying and, be, and being imbibed with the spirit of mm -hmm. liberation, revolution, which is a part of the force of nature, right? Which is what the lower represent, right? Or embody in, 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 in that respect. And that's not to say that there is not a mystical element, yeah, to, to the thing. But remember that we are also manifestations of nature as human beings, yeah? Um, uh, but but I'm, I'm emphasizing the social function of the spiritual leaders in that respect. That, that was important. And then uh, as I've learned more, uh, even more recently, like I've learned about the different connections on the island itself. So how the plantation related to the, the so-called maroons in the hills. And then in between those, you have maroons that are not in the hills, but they're, they're on the outskirts of the plantation. And, and they play a key role in the connection from one plantation to another. And that's amazing to me that you have people where they're not going on the hills, you know, they're not they're on the plantation, but they're living away from the plantation in secret, but right next to it. They're, they're putting themselves in danger, but to form, as Mama, Mama Bello was saying, a function. And their function is to maintain the connections between the different elements of Africans on this island. <laughs> it's madness, yeah? <laughs> it's like the, the levels of organization that it takes uh, to put something like that together. And then finally, I'll say this. I think a lot of the history post the revolution is very important. Yeah, it's just as important as the fact of the revolution itself and the victory in the revolution, as far as I'm concerned, for two major reasons. The first is that I believe that one of the secrets of the development of what comes to be known as Pan-Africanism as a goal or a political or its many political ideologies one of the secrets in that is Haiti, yeah? Both in inspiration, in terms of the fact, if you listen, read any of the work of our greats, leaders and scholars throughout the 1800s, blessings to my queen, yeah? Um, read any of the scholars, yeah? And leaders like Martin Delaney, Edward Wilmot Blyden, you know? Even Frederick Douglass, yeah? In the 80, who were active in the 1800s, they all speak of the inspiration of Haiti, all of them. I, I have not come across one that doesn't, yeah? And then there are brothers and sisters who are from Haiti that also travel. Um, one of the, probably the most notable names is a man by the name of Benito Sylvain, yeah? Who's very active, yeah, um, in, in the late 1800s. He becomes an, a, a, an ambassador at the first Pan-African Congress for Haiti, and also Ethiopia, Ethiopia. because he facilitates um, Haiti being able to support Ethiopia when uh, Italy invades yeah, in the late 1800s, yeah? Um, and so not only is he present at the first Pan-African conference, but he's also one of the more radical voices, yes? He, 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 he understands early that colonialism is nothing but slavery by another name. Yeah, it, it took many of us another generation to catch up to that consciousness. All right. So, so Benito Sylvain is, is important. And you look at the connections that people from Haiti and 
and the other parts of the diaspora were trying to make with Haiti during that period. I don't think there was there is a Pan African movement in the way that it begins to develop. Has if if it's not for the Haiti Revolution and the nation in the making that is, you know, uh that Haiti is building at that time. Yeah. Haiti is a is a beacon light for Africans around the world on the continent and in the diaspora mm -hmm. during that period. And I'll say one last thing. The second point is that it's also when we talk about um what Mama Mark Bella was talking about in terms of how certain things were undone, mm -hmm. is also the fact that I think what we talk what we call neocolonialism today, yeah. Um, I think that Haiti is one of our earliest case studies in terms of how the system of Western imperialism responded to Haiti and what it did. Yeah. And there was one in, in um there's two links in Kalama Gavi, right? So there's two links in Gavi that I wanna that I wanna highlight in this respect here. The first is that um and both of them are in the book Race First by Baba Tony Martin, yeah. Um, and the first is that he 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 draws a connection between Benito Sylvain and, and Papa Garvey like this. He says, um, he says also the name of Garvey's organization, yeah, which is the UNIA ACL, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, bore a suspicious similarity to the Universal Association for the Moral Improvement of Mankind established in 1905 by a Haitian Pan-Africanist, Benito Sylvain. Okay, so it's possible, we don't know this for sure, but it's possible <laughs> that, that Benito yeah. Sylvain yeah, was an inspiration behind the naming of the UNIA ACL. This is very, very possible. Okay, it's certain that Papa Gavi knew of Benito Sylvain, yeah? Um, but that, that that's possible, yeah. But then later on, um, in when the UNIA is seeking to re relocate its headquarters to Mama Africa, specifically Liberia, that the program is 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 um, thwarted by um, basically Western uh, businessmen and the Western government, uh, you know, controlling the, the 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 government of Liberia at the time, yeah. And in 1924, he shows us that. It, meanwhile, in 1924, whilst all the, the American government and the Firestone Rubber Company are in Liberia, he says the, the, the 1924 UNIA convention warned that, Firestone that a Firestone concession um, would ultimately mean, quote, usurpation of the government, even as has been done with the Black Republic of Haiti after similar white companies entered there under the pretense of developing the country, yeah? And this is during the period, sorry, just after the period in which uh, America had occupied, yeah, um, Haiti, yes? Um, uh, for um, about, sorry, during the period, yeah? Which America occupied Haiti, yeah? But from, I think it was 1915, to like 1934, I believe is, right. is, 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 the, is the dates, yeah? So this right. is during that period where um, the Haiti is under an American occupation during which um, they've done things that rewrote the constitution, they've stolen gold, yeah, they, they've killed off people that are trying to resist the, the, the incursion and so on and so forth, right? And to this day, you know, we have a nation like Haiti that was self-sufficient and, and growing its own food, having to import food from America and other nations, yeah? Um, and so when we talk about what becomes known as neocolonialism, a significant a number of the lessons that we learn about what that system is and how these people institute such a system can be found in Haiti, down to, I'm, I'm made to understand, they, 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 they had a significant impact upon the education system that Haiti was, that was providing free education, yes, to its people, prior to that particular invasion, okay? Prior to the the um, the imposition of this uh, indemnity that France was able with its cannons, yeah, to get um, our people in Haiti to have to pay. There was an education, this is before this existed in anywhere in the Western world, there was uh, a state funded education system for children in Haiti. Britain never had that. America never had that. Yeah. But they were able to destroy it in Haiti. Um, and so there are so many lessons. There are so many lessons that we can learn from uh, from Haiti. 
Um, and yeah, I, my, my heart goes out to our people there all the time and we always want to do more. We always want to do more when it comes to Haiti when we learn about what is taking place in Haiti. But we're glad that we're able to do what we can do and what we are able to do. And we look forward to doing more. Ten that worry. Ten that worry. Give thanks, Brother Shakara. That, that, that was the in-depth exposition right there. You see why after everyone had your video, they ran away and they said, <laughs> I'm not learning enough to do the campaign. They had all of that with date, time stamps, everything. They said, no, 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 no. <laughs> But give thanks for offering that because again you know um knowledge well it is power and its application is even greater power you know yes, so, but i appreciate your your support with the campaign as well as yes, um, your thoughts on here and um mm -hmm. i'm uh, the floor is basically now open but before i do that there's a brother in here sorry if i don't pronounce your name correctly Wela costa cabral he's listening all the way from brazil so I know the time difference is there. I'm just going to try and get his question in before we move <clears throat> in um, uh, further. So, uh, uh, brother Wayla is asking, how can we empower ancestral moralities to contribute in African real life? For example, Christianity contributes in building school, offer opportunity for poor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, very good question, Willa. Um, you know, obviously, as um, you can you you can hear uh, Shakara's first exposition. I was just re recently in Cuba, and you know, just seeing free education systems today, I've learned something new again. Something else has been added to my 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 should we call it library of knowledge? Um, you know, so again, I keep getting um these these examples that show me that uh. You know, all these examples, again, we mentioned from the democracy to the communalism to the socialism, we find all these elements, these ideas were there already. No one's invented them. Uh, someone's just given a set of those ideas a name, called a framework and said it's mine. Uh, we know where that comes from. So I will first put this question um, to Mama Bayina, please. Um, and then we can you know, try it somewhere. Uh, that comment is, um, we could say to the, the two parts and they contradict each other. How can we empower ancestral moralities to contribute to, uh, to contribute in Africans real life? That's a question that's separate. Now, for example, absolutely not. We cannot say for example, Christianity, nothing. Okay. <laughs> that is not an example. Exactly. All right. Uh, using IT as a, the example, from 1804 to 1820, we created our own learning systems. We created our own schools. School of, in fact, uh, King Henry created the School of Medicine, the, the School of, of Languages, the School of Mathematics, the School of Music, and the School of, uh, forget, four schools, university level mm -hmm. that was created. Because he said, we should train the people who will train our children. We cannot take the slavers and put our children's mind in the hands of the slavers. Remember that. Now, what is education? Once you decide to introduce ancestral morality, then all the rest will expand from that. Justice will come from that. The ability uh, to listen to each other and to, to agree to do things together I'm not even going to use terms like democracy and all this other garbage. This stuff has too much garbage into it. I stay away from those words. Okay. But way before people were talking about branding democracy, we got alone and knew how to sit down and talk until we agreed to how we were going to do it. So the Awa, the Taino, the Maya, the Incas all had their systems of sitting down and coming to agreement. So don't take these things as, you know, these people brought in, you know. Now, what does Christianity do? What is the purpose of Christianity? Christianity is to create zombies. 
fidèle. Okay? The word they use in French is fidèle. Once you go into the church, they play in your head. They give you all these words to recite. You have a lot of things to know by heart. So you never know them. You can recite them, but you do not know them because you cannot question them. You cannot analyze them. You cannot dissect them. And anything you have not questioned, not analyzed, not dissect, you do not know. So it makes zombies. It created schools that makes even more refined zombies. Today we have universities. You could get a PhD in zombification. <coughs> you could get any letter you want. Now, what is knowledge? Both in Africa and in IET, I will hear people say that. Somebody will say, oh yeah, Johnny. Somebody say, oh, your son is real bright. He was number one in the class this month. And the mother will respond, yeah, he got a lot of book learning, but the child is so dumb. Book learning don't make you a better person. You could recite all the democratic blah, 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 blah. Listen to any politician talking. Go to any parliament, Congress. Look at all the, oh, the UN. Look at all the yeah, 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 about democracy, about respect for people's life. What do they do? Nuclear bombing, wars, destruction of life. No respect for nobody. So that should have taught you. They went to their schools and they didn't learn nothing. So why do you want to force your child in there? So learning, once you learn your behavior, is what shows that you have learned something. Okay? If I come to you and say, I'm democratic. Oh, you got a half a gallon of juice? Well, I need a half a gallon of juice to drink. You know, in my house, I drink a half a gallon of juice every morning. So I'm drinking it all. Because <laughs> I'm highly democratic. I'm just, I'm this, I'm that. I can tell you all that I am. But everything I do will contradict what I say I am. And if you're smart, you will analyze my functioning and you will decide, this woman, you're not having her into your house again. This is it. And that's what we need to understand. So Christianity is all about selling you a God that you cannot see, that promises a whole bunch of stuff, but you never saw anything. So it cannot educate people. It cannot give you morality. How many people have experienced the priest telling you, uh, do what I say, don't you look at what I do? All over Africa, we have examples of, yeah, of these people saying that during the colonization and all. Half of the mulatto children anywhere are often the children of priests and other missionaries. Mm -hmm. okay? The colonist will sell his own blood. He has the child with you, with a black woman. And he sells it just like any other slaves. It means nothing, not even his own blood don't mean nothing to him. And you think he's gonna respect me? Come on. Okay, so please don't say sentences like morality, for example, Christianity, no. <laughs> we have to be careful how we speak. Words are energies. The energy you send out is what, that's how you're creating the world all the time. The cosmos is forever being created. If we are two million saying, oh my goodness, this is a horrible life, but that's what you're creating. If you want a different world, imagine it and speak it. Mm. You know, I could be going anywhere and people say, Baina, how are you? I'm saying, I'm fantastic. How can you say that with everything that God has said? Well, I'm fantastic. Only fantastic people can change the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you keep waiting for the fantastic people to come. <laughs> so that so, sounds like uh, many, many um, African people waiting for this guy with blonde hair, long locks, wearing these hippie, hippie sandals, you know? Yes, indeed. Um, well, but you know, I just have to interject because at this point, I know we have about 16 minutes left. 
the last five minutes i'm going to um use it to uh give those who are interested in obtaining a copy of the film you know because we're still honoring eric kambach's generosity I, I love the brother give thanks again living that um african philosophy you know that the, the sun shines every day and we all feel its warmth and we, we don't need to, we don't need to say thanks back to it the brother has put five dvds on board there'll be five um lucky winners as it were or five people who can take up the opportunity we'll, we'll, we'll put it uh, back in with a, a lot less of perhaps a standard for anybody to answer but going back to Willis, um question um i think what I want to add to that is, you know, because he says, for example, Christians contributing in building a school or offer opportunities for the poor. Um, and again, I'm just taking it back to even Mama Bayina's point. You see, when we say these things, sometimes I have to give the benefit of the doubt. But then from I'm Wiener, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There yes. is no benefit of a doubt. We have a thousand years of history of these people stealing, pillaging, raping. They have not yet stopped. We fought all the years of the war to become free in IT. And after we became free, what did they say? You got to pay me mm -hmm. because you worked for me for nothing for 312 years. Now you've got to pay me because you're free. They yeah. did the same thing to Jamaica. They did the same thing everywhere. No, there is no benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. We have to stop that. No, absolutely. They uh, are who they have shown to be. We yes. must. Yes. yes. No, Mama Bayina, and the benefit of the doubt no, no, is not for the, 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 the wife. It's more for the brother uh, Huey because if he's based in Brazil, I'm sure he's very aware of the attacks that the evangelical right acts on people who practice African traditional beliefs. The youngest person I know, 11-year-old boy, murdered by gangs for being a Santeria practitioner. So um, the benefit of the doubt is I'm more for whoever that, do you not know this? I don't live in Brazil and I know this. You should have experienced it because in the last election, uh, before they got rid of this right-wing genocidal Bolsonaro guy, the, the, the one who's now the, um, the president, Lula, he went to an African um, Santeria shrine. And can you believe they made that video about a political campaign to say that, look, if you vote this so-called leftist man in, you're inviting the devil into our country. It became part of the political campaigning process. So I'm not sure how the brother has asked the question or, or the sister, sorry. It could be maybe they're young and his lack of knowledge. So is 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 this person I'm saying maybe we give the benefit of the doubt? No, 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 no. Not for those. We have okay, to hold them. I stand corrected. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder why he so perhaps he can see, for instance, there's Christian school, there's Muslim schools. So let me ask you, brother uh, or sister Will, excuse me if um, you know, I my, my eyesight deceived me slightly. I actually wear glasses, but it's not every time I, I get to wear it. So um, what it is, is when you think of the fact that even Brazil, your own country, has legislature within it to protect all religious and spiritual expressions. However, I've never seen one national shrine that is financially, socially, and otherwise supported by the government. But I do know the churches receive funding from the government as does the other religions. So I think some of us we have <coughs> the hatred directed towards African traditions. As I said, the, the, the religious expression is, is protected in your constitution. However, there's absolutely no me, uh, means of enforcing that, you know? So yeah, no, definitely we can't speak of the morality because there's none up, um, present. However, if we want to build institutions and structures, then my brother or sister, I can only ask you, are you part of an um, African-centered organization that is doing works to, to, to create the kind of future that you're talking about? Have you joined up with um, uh, Mama Bayena Bellows, Foundation Felicite, where you, you can volunteer some of your time, some of your skills, some of your talent? Are you a member of the Alcable and Revivalist Movement in the UK, where you might even just be giving international solidarity or passing dear works to your family in Brazil? You see, we have to get to a place where we have to be willing participants in this future that we keep saying that we want. Because that is how these things happen. Um, Christianity has had centuries to accumulate wealth of blood. 
So setting up a school is, 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 is basically of no significance. But how about we, who even if you're trying to set up a place where you can go to reason, to commune, to just have a, a kind of a spiritual fellowship, you find that our systems, they won't allow you. They won't give you that political, social, or um, economic resource, okay? So let, let's not underestimate, no one is, um, should we say, um, a not trying enough. You have to be a part of that solution. So you can't ask what everybody else is doing. What are you contributing um, to that? You know, so that's all I can add to that. Mama Bayina, will you? Well, oh. I'll just add right now in Mali, uh, Professor <laughs> Dombe Bakoli is on trial. Mm -hmm. What is his crime? For believing blackness. In Mali now, a 80 some years old man is being tried because he believed we should believe in our ancestors, we should respect our own, et cetera, et cetera, in Mali with a so-called progressive government. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. This is this this is where you have it. Um, and this is yeah, progressive, all these things. But again, you see, we see that same subterfuge as well, again, even surrounding the death of um, Desilene among our own family that were around him you know there's letters recorded in this book written to his his his, his widow his, his wife um, and you know there's content in those letters from some also other well-known figures within the haitian revolution and i'll urge you to read it because all mama Bayina does is put the simple question <coughs> read and question what you're reading um for yourself and as we have um the final um nine minutes what i'm going to do is um leave should we say the final words mama Bayina, if you start brother Shakura, if you can put something in there for us and then i will tell you how if you're still aspiring to win one of those dvds what you can do to win it mama Bayina, would you like to close this off i'm sorry Ahimia, would you like to I said, Mama Bayina, would you like to close us off, please? Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's a noise. I'm not sure where it's from. In the name of all those who walk this planet as they created it, in the name of all those who spilled their bloods so we would know today, of all those who fought, fought against forces 10,000 times more than them. In the name of all those who accepted starvation, pain, torture, so we would be here today stronger if we knew about them. I bid each one of you, do learn about your ancestors everywhere. You are not limited to Haiti. We are not limited to Africa. We are the guardian of this planet. Every inch of this planet belongs to me. So take care of the inch that is under your feet and grow strong, grow stronger each day, grow stronger each year, grow stronger with each generation. And let us regain our role as the guardian of our planet Earth. Ashe. Ashe. Beautiful, Mama Bayina. Give thanks, Mama Bayina, for that beautiful um, um, exposition there. Um, I appreciate that, Brother Shakara. Um, would you like any closing um, uh, comments? I've noticed that there are two questions which have come in um, and have come in at a rather um, awkward time as we're so close to, to leave. Um, Mama Bayina, would you be able to give us like uh, 10 minutes in case it runs over only because they've asked two direct questions to you. Go ahead. Let's let's do the questions, Brother Shakara, if you bear with me and then we come back. Yeah? Okay. 
Um, so it's the first one is from Michael Chapman. Um, and it's, 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 it's for you specifically, Mangobayin. It says, when would be the best time to visit IET to see what work I can do to support the community in health? And secondly, how can we learn more of Makinda? Both these questions, send us an email, we'll respond by email. Aha. Uh -huh. Towards the end of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So um, the next one, We'll um we, we will put I'll, I'll actually find the email as well and put it online. Um Michael Chapman, this is this is um the website for Mama Bayina on the screen now. Please you can also make direct contact that way, and then you know you 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 can have that that conversation um mm -hmm. um further on. Beautiful. So I'll take the very last question, and um, which is from Pierre because he's been with us right from the off. Um he says, I have a question for Mama Bayin. Mama Bello or Mr. Adolfo, I am curious what are your thoughts on Freemasonry? I asked because I saw that there's some Masonic symbols mixed in with Vodou in IET. Uh, let's be clear. Mason is a couple of hundred years back. Everything in Vodou predates whatever is the oldest date you could have in your head. So we don't have Masonic symbols okay. <laughs> now these people who go around and by the way i must add i'm sorry even though we're at the end masonry was created by a group of female of women who were murdered by the men by some men members and then they made new laws about women not being allowed to be part of it one, put that to rest with, you know, deal with when in dealing with this thing. The other thing is, many times people are saying, yeah, I look like Dessaline was some Freemason and Tucson, blah, 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 blah. Please use your brain. Okay. So I'm going to spend all my life in slavery and then I was a member of the Freemason something, something. Come on. Okay. But they do have a trick they play. When someone becomes head of state, there is always an invitation to the head of state into the Mason temple as a way of tying you up so they can get more advantages and privileges while you are head of state. So there's always gonna be a connect and say that this president was part of Freemason. That's not, come on. No, it was not. Yes. I don't care how many books write it. I say, no, he was never. Desaline was not. That's that's one of the most fantastic answers I've I've ever had. So to sing straight to the point, we don't need to say um, any more than that. Um, and I'll just um, quickly go back to the brother because he's he is um, he he's come back uh, to realize. So I, I have a, a mission for you, uh, brother, sister Huela Costa. Um, yes, you have you've had had the question and you've heard the answers. So the first quest for you, please go to bayinabello.com. Send a website to a uh, email to Mama Bayina and ask her how you can also contribute. You 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 you're in a part of the world where, again, we have a difference because we've been colonized to speak a different language. How can you bridge the gap? How can you take that word from um, the the Haitian Creole and the French and bring it into that Brazilian Portuguese? Again, if we're not willing to be in that solution, uh, we we can't really expect um, anything else. And Mama Bayina, Michael Chapman will get in touch. Yes, please do. I, I hope, um, you know, you don't have CCTVs in, in the kind of corridors of the workplace, you know? <laughs> but yes, thank you for making the time. Uh, so at this point, as I said, Baba Shakara, if you, you, you jump in and close us off, and then I will just come and um, just let everyone... Um, yes. My brother, the, the, the voice of Mama Bello is sufficient for me. So I, I will just say I look forward to reading the book, Aibobo. Aibobo, blessings, give thanks. That's such a beautiful thing. Family, give thanks to you all for your time and for being present with us and for these last couple of hours. And um, just to let you know that I do plan uh, to have Mama Bayina coming back. We will discuss um, 
different other themes and topics as and when they come up. Uh, today was an ancestral veneration for a great man. I will urge you all to read it, even if it's not only to learn. And it will surprise you what you will read here that you'll be like, oh, snap. I, I think maybe I'm looking in the mirror. Oh, snap. Maybe I need to do some more of this. And then the, the most important thing you realize, oh, snap, our ancestral knowledge is being used seriously against us. And as I said, I read this book and I came across the story of uh, Osa and um, the so-called Uncle Set. Yeah, you have to ask yourself, what is it about our knowledge that's been used against us and why we can't seem to get beyond? Yeah, so let's use that knowledge um, in our own ways um, to take us where we need to go. And the final announcement, I've kept it so very simple. Um, the, for the DVD winners, all you have to do, um, the show is about to end. The first five emails I received, just, you know, send an email, say, hello, um, Mr. Adolfo, hello, Dalian. Um, I was listening to the show. You've won. All you have to do, you give me your address and I'll send um, uh, the, the, the DVD to, to you, okay? I hope you've all enjoyed the show. Um, and the time has been as insightful as it has been for me. Um, and to my esteemed guest, I hail you up both always. Um, give thanks for your time and presence. Thank you, brothers. Both of you, brothers. Yes. And yes. it will be, go on and be, let the desolene in you rise and do what you must. Ashe, yes, thanks. Take care, family. Until the next one, see you all.